From an entitled Karen who tries to ruin her own daughter's wedding to a crazy Karen who just does something so insane that she gets banned from the local Walmart, these are the craziest Karens of all time, and I present to you the Karen Story Movie. Let's get into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Aiden. So anyways, Aiden was about 17, 18 at the time, and over the summer, he got a summer job working at this grocery store. So he didn't really have consistent hours, so sometimes he'd be working in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, and sometimes really late at night. Like, this was one of those grocery stores that was open practically 24 hours a day. I don't know if it was 24 hours, but he worked a very late shift on... When this story started, he was at a very late shift. So this was like... I don't know, 11, 12 at night. So you'd have a few people come in every like 20 minutes or so, but it really wasn't rush hour. And he was also the only person in the store, which makes this Karen story even more interesting because this Karen decides to come in and start some problems when it's only Aiden. Remember, this kid's like 17 and she's about to give him the hardest time possible. So it all started as what seemed like a normal night. But as all these stories go, they do not turn out to be normal nights. So anyways, Aiden was working at the cash register. He was also in charge of basically anything else going down at the store because he was the only one there. So if someone needed, like, if something needed to be put back or anything like that, he was in charge as he was the only one there. But he was mainly, ma like, mainly manning the cash register at this point. So all of a sudden, at, like, 12.15, no one else in the store... No one else working there, no one else getting stuff. He hears the door open, so he looks over, and he sees this old he sees this woman come in. This older woman. She looks very angry. She has a look. She just has a look on her face as soon as she walks in. She she just has this kind of look that you know that she's gonna be trouble. Like off the bat you know that she's just going to be difficult. She's going to be a situation from... They know that she's going to be a situation from, like, the moment she walks in the door. That's honestly what it's looking like right now. So Aiden kind of looks at her as she very angrily walks up to his desk, and he's like, all right, what's, what's good? And she comes up and says, I would like to return this item. And she puts an item on his desk. And I don't know exactly what this item was, but I do have a description of it. It was beaten up, it was broken, it was heavily used. Aiden didn't even know if they sold it here, and she didn't have a receipt. Yeah, I'm going to say that again so I can let that sink in. The Karen was trying to return something that was clearly used so often that it's completely lost its function, whatever it is. It, it doesn't even look like something that Aiden sold at the store, and she also had no proof that she bought it from the store, a.k.a. receipt. So Aiden very calmly tells her, hey, ma'am, uh, like we do have a return policy saying that it has to like be in pretty good condition and you also have to have proof of purchase. And this thing is definitely not in good condition. It doesn't look like you have any proof of purchase. And I don't even know if you're in the right store right now because I don't think we sell that here. And the Karen gives him this look, this kind of look of like, how dare you question my authority I'm your elder, you should do exactly what I say, no matter what type kind of look, right? So yeah, um, anyways, the Karen is just like, responds to him, I got this from the store and I have not used it. I only used it once and it didn't work. I just want my money back. And <laughs> Aiden's like, uh, could you tell me like a description of this item? Because I'm telling you guys, it was so worn out and so used that Aiden couldn't even figure out what this was supposed to be. Like, he didn't even know what to type into the computer to look up to try and figure out what it was because it was so mangled and messed up and beaten up that he couldn't even tell you what it was supposed to be. Like, like he couldn't even get a good educated guess on it. That's how messed up it was. And that's low-key one of the reasons why Aiden wasn't able to tell me what it was because he genuinely couldn't even figure it out himself. This is when the Karen guy starts to get really mad. She's like, you know, your business is scamming a local citizen by not giving the money, not giving a refund where the refund was clearly stated that you could get one. And Aiden says, yeah, I mean, we do have a refund policy, but it's also pretty clearly stated that you need a receipt to get the refund. And she's like, you know, I, I just don't have it with me. And Aiden's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, but like, if you have it, like, even if you have it at home, 
we're gonna need you to like go back and get it like i know that's a bit of a trek but it's his policy like i don't run the store i just work here i can't be doing stuff like that and so, because Aiden was maybe going to be lenient if she had a receipt, and then he could at least type in the item and see if they actually hot, had it, because, like, Aiden was low-key trying to call her bluff, because he was pretty confident that they did not sell whatever this was supposed to be. But she goes on to say, so, yeah, so, yeah, she just, like, has a mental breakdown. It's like, well, how about you, you just give me my money, and I'll get the receipt later, which is, like, the most ridiculous thing ever. I get that she doesn't want to make the drive, but what if that like here's the thing let's say that you didn't want to make the drive wouldn't it just make sense for you to be like you don't need the receipt here this like give me a refund instead of saying give me the money now i'll drive back and get the receipt and bring it back to you like that literally makes no sense bro so yeah aiden kind of just kind of puts his foot down a little bit and explains to her look without the receipt i can't even begin the process of trying to give you a refund like, not even, not even talking about the state of this item right here, as he kind of motions towards, like, the completely destroyed item, whatever it was. Not even to mention the state of this item. Just, like, very generally, I don't think I can even give you, start to give you a refund for this. So the Karen, something changes in her eyes. Something evil starts to brew behind those, the, those cold, dark eyes or whatever. And she's like, so, you've chosen... To disrespect me. And he's like, uh... So you have chosen to tarnish your elders. And he's kind of like, bro, what, 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 are you, what are you saying right now? I genuinely don't know what's going on. So you have chosen. And he's like, all right, bro. Because he's like, all right, this, she's going on about something. I don't know what's going on right now. But it's not like I can do anything about it. And she's like... So the, I'm going to enact citizen's justice. Bro, not even citizen's arrest, which is the goofiest thing that you only hear Karen say. Citizen's justice. I'm pretty sure that's just called breaking the law. Oh, man, I'm just going to enact my own justice. When has that ever been said and then something good follows it, bro? Like, actually give me a time and a place and I'll, I'll believe you. But until I hear it, I don't believe you, bro. So anyways, she turns and she starts walking down one of the aisles. And Aiden is so confused at this point, because he genuinely just has no idea what's going on. And sure enough, the Karen goes up to one of the aisles and says, are you going to give me a refund? Yes or no? And I mean, obviously, he's not going to give her a refund, because why would he give her a refund at this point? She's giving him no reasons to give him a refund. Actually, she's given him so many reasons not to give him, like, to give her a refund at this point. And he's like, uh, no, I still need to see your receipt to start the process. And, and, then, and then the Karen takes a big, like, okay, so it was, I think it's like, let's just say it's a big rack of vegetable oil. It was a bunch of something, right? She takes a hand and plows through it all. It all falls on the ground, breaks open, vegetable oil is spilling all over the floor. It's going everywhere. And she turns back to Aiden and just stares him down. And Aiden is pretty shocked at the moment because he had no idea that the Karen was going to start doing actual damage, right? And she's like, do I get a refund now, little guy? And Aiden is just like, whoa, this is out of my range. This is out of my expertise at this point. This was not in the how to be a cashier training. They did not prepare me for crazy Karens in my training, bro. That's all I'm going to say is I was not prepared for something like this. So sure enough, he's like, uh, like, ma'am, I'm going to ask you to leave. Like, and like, cause in his training, I think he was told to like, if anyone's like doing damage or breaking the rules or whatever, you can ask them to leave. And she's like, I'm not leaving before I get my refund. Give me my refund in full and I'll consider leaving. So not even I'll leave, but I'll consider leaving if you give me exactly what I want. She was probably even going to do a little bit more damage after that too, bro, if we're being honest. Yeah, but sure enough, uh, he's like, uh, no, like, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. So what the Karen does is she goes on and just, like, destroys something else. Like, I think she finds, like, something glass or something easy to break. She picks it up, boom, smashes it on the ground, takes another one, lifts it above her head and says, are you gonna give me a refund now? And Aiden's like, no. Boom, smashes it on the ground again, picks up another one. Are you gonna give me a refund now? Aiden just looks at her blankly. Boom! Smashes on the ground. So you can see the pattern here. The Karen's just trying to destroy the entire place until she gets what she wants, right? 
So Aiden picks up the phone, dials 911, as you know you should at this point. Someone's breaking all your stuff, and you're 16, 17, whatever, and no one else is there. Can't call for backup, can't call your manager, can't do any of that. So yeah, calls 911 and kind of explains the situation while big smashing and crashing noises are in the background. Okay, the dispatcher says that they'll have people there in 15 minutes, so just make sure the situation doesn't escalate. Which is a, I don't know, it's a pretty big ass to tell some 15-year-old, hey, I know you're in some crazy situation right now, but make sure that it doesn't escalate. Oh, yeah, he'll just go back to his de-escalating a Karen training. You can't train for that, man. You can't de-escalate a Karen once they go full psycho Karen mode, bro. You can't de-escalate them, bro. Anyways, though, yeah, so he's kind of just behind the cash register watching as this Karen goes around smashing stuff, saying, are you going to give me a refund now, little guy? Boom. You're going to give me a refund now? Boom. But all of a sudden, or not all of a sudden, I guess 20 minutes later, the doors open up, and two police officers walk in to see the Karen breaking stuff and to see so much stuff on the ground, spilled, broken, all of the above, right? I mean, you can't really break, uh, uh, splattered, uh, destroyed, whatever you want to call it. Depends on the item. You can't shatter a, like an apple, but you can smush it, right? So whatever it is, it's all been kind of destroyed. It's all been kind of wrecked. So the police officers come in. They're like, what's going on here? The Karen sees them, turns around, sees a supply closet or like a broom closet. Okay, when I say sprint, I mean sprint super liberally. I don't mean she's like, I don't know, Usain Bolt doing like a one second mile. I'm saying she like power waddles. Yeah, she power waddles to the, uh, what's it called? To the broom closet, gets in there and locks it behind her, which why did the broom closet lock from the inside? Who knows? Aiden's like, oh, you can't be, you gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me. So police officers, one of them walks over to look over at all the damage and make sure the Karen doesn't escape. The other one goes over to Aaron, Aaron, Aiden, sorry. I think Aaron is the name of the last guy in the last Karen story, actually, and asks him, so can you give me a recap of what happened? So Aiden goes on to say, yeah, so I was just here. She came back with an item. This woman came in with an item, the woman in the closet right now. It was pretty beaten up and she didn't have a receipt and she was demanding a refund. And I basically told her that, well, one, her item was so like beat up and destroyed. I couldn't even tell her that. I couldn't even tell if it came from here or not. But also, but, you know, second, you know, if she doesn't have a receipt, I can't even start the process to giving her a refund. So without the receipt, I couldn't even give her one. So she got really mad at this and started breaking stuff, demanding a refund. And uh, by the time you guys came, she's like broken about a third of the store's items. Like, this is pretty crazy. I didn't want to intervene, though, because I don't know what this woman's capable of or, you know, how deranged she really is. Police officer said, OK, son, you did the right thing calling us and trying to keep the situation as calm as possible. We'll take it from here. So they both go up and actually like Aiden stays in the cash register, but this is a fairly small convenience store. So it's not, so he can hear everything good that goes on. So they go up to the broom closet and they're like, ma'am, what's the meaning of all this? And she's like, that little rat scallion won't get, or rap scallion won't give me a, a refund on my items that I purchased from the store. He is stealing from the elders right now. And they're like, ma'am, first of all, he just works here. He can't make the rules. Second of all, it's pretty clearly stated, and there was a legit sign talking about refunds in the store. So it's not like the Karen had no idea at all. It was actually fairly clear. But anyways, they're like, ma'am, it's pretty clear from like what we're seeing, like, and they point to the sign, you do need like a receipt to get a refund. Like that's just kind of the deal here. And she's like, well, he should have known. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. The Karen was just going on about something about how she deserved a refund and how it's so bad that she didn't get one or something. But yeah, I don't, I don't even know. And eventually they are like, ma'am, if you don't like, if you don't come here or if, or it's like, if you don't come out right now, we're going to go in there and get you for like, and I don't know. They say something along the lines of that. And that's when the Karen starts maniacally slash evilly laughing it is one of the weirdest, most off-putting, like, responses that Aiden could have ever heard. Like, it is the weirdest thing ever. The Karen just starts laughing. Laughing hysterically. Like an evil villain in a superhero movie. 
when she's in the closet. And what she's about to say next is one of the craziest things Aiden has ever heard anyone ever say. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I like to see all the people who commented. I'll try and heart as many of those comments as I possibly can. Thank you guys. Anyways, also, these videos are on Spotify, or I try and put as many of them as I possibly can. Link's in the description. Also, follow tick my new TikTok, or it's the same TikTok, I guess. I'll be posting my shorts on there as well if you want to help out. And finally, the best way to support the channel is just to binge watch the videos. So at some point, sit down and just watch a bunch of my old story videos. Or maybe right after you're done watching this one to the end, you can just keep on watching more videos. I'll have a story time playlist in the pinned comment. That makes it real easy for you guys to watch. And please, 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 if you are binge watching the videos, make sure to comment down below telling me such so I can say thank you personally. Anyways, let's get back to the crazy Karen story. So anyways, a little recap. The Karen has ran into the broom supply closet, right? Because she sees the police and she, she knows she's about to be arrested. Aiden explains the whole situation to the police and explains it like, all right, this is what's going on. This is what's going down. And they're like, okay, uh, they probably got their walkie talkie. We're like, we got a, we got a code 58 crazy Karen in a convenience store. I repeat, we got a code 58. I don't know if that's a real code or something, but let's just say for the sake of it, code 58 equals crazy Karen in convenience store. Typical situation they have to deal with on the daily at this point. But anyways, they go up to the Karen and they basically tell her, look, we're going, if you don't come out here and like, we're going to we're going to go into the supply closet. We're going to open that door if you don't open it yourself. And that's when the Karen starts laughing maniacally, which is one of the most off-putting responses you could have possibly heard. One of the most off-putting responses in general, right? So sure enough, the Karen is just laughing, laughing maniacally. And she says, you guys can't arrest me you can't arrest me. And the, the, the police officers are just looking at her. And she says, you wouldn't dare arrest a woman. That is not very gentlemanly of you. So the Karen opens up the door and starts laughing. And the two police officers are just looking at each other. And they look back at the Karen. And then they look at each other. And then they look back at the Karen. And the Karen responds, she, the Karen repeats herself and says, you guys wouldn't dare arrest a woman, so I'm going to walk free unless you want to be bad gentlemen. Bro was really raised in the 1700s or something, bro. I don't know what, I don't know what, what crossed her mind to think that that's actually what's going to happen, but that is what's going to happen, bro. Like, I was like, all right, word. So she walks out there, and the police officers are like, uh, ma'am, you caused all this damage to the store. We are going to have to at least take you in for questioning. She's like, what? No, you wouldn't dare not be good gentlemen. And they just kind of look at each other. And Aiden is just so floored by this response. He's just so, he, he, he's trying to figure out what's going on. Aiden's like, is this really her response? Is this her really her get out of jail free card moment? Is saying that they wouldn't dare arrest her because she's a woman and they would not disrespect their manlyhood or I don't freaking know, bro. But yeah, um, they basically say, I don't know if that's how that's going to work. So they turn her around, they take out the handcuffs, and she says, you wouldn't dare do that. And they both look at each other, and then they put on the handcuffs, and she's like, no, no, arrest him. And they both look at each other, the two police officers are looking at each other like, bro, what did, this, what did she just say? And she's like, arrest that guy behind the cash register. Pointing to Aiden or like motioning to Aiden because she's got her hands behind her back. It's a little hard to point to someone when you're in handcuffs with your hands behind your back. And they're just like, uh, why? And she's like, he's robbing me of my, of my refund. They're like, uh, what? She, he's robbing me of my refund. And they're like, ma'am, ma'am, you, you, first of all, you know what, ma'am? No, because <laughs> they're not going to explain it to her for the hundredth time of how, like, no, if you want a refund, you've got to get your own receipt. And no, if he's not doing it, he just works for it. And they're done explaining it to the Karen. And as the Karen is being walked out, she looks at Aiden and looks at him dead in the eyes and says to him, this isn't over. Mark my words. And that was like one of the most chilling responses Aiden could have ever received. And uh, let me just say, she did not lie. This was not over. And she was definitely not done. 
Unfortunately for Aiden, she was very much not done. Because she was about to return in the worst way possible. Fast forward three months. Aiden is still working here. It's like, it's kind of towards the tail end of the summer. So Aiden's like, this is like his last week or last two weeks or something. But he's basically, he's almost done with what he's doing, right? And it's, he's completely forgotten about the Karen incident. His manager came in the next day after the whole Karen incident, kind of gave him a, uh, a thank you for handling the situation well. The shop actually closed down for a couple days to reassess or whatever. They, uh, the Karen was like fined X number of dollars to repay for whatever. And she actually did, which is a little surprising, especially for what she's about to do. It's a little surprising she went through with it. Um, she definitely had a change of heart, that's all I'm trying to say. But yeah, after about a week, they got the place up and running again, and uh, Aiden was made, like, employee of the month or whatever out of the three employees they had. So, wow, such an honor, man. But anyways, uh, fast forward, like, two months later, three months later, whatever I said, this is, like, one of the last... This is either the last week or second to last week that Aiden's working the shift. And, uh, you know, he just has completely forgotten about the whole Karen situation. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't think much of it. He's kind of at the point where he's like, okay, you know, I'm kind of wrapping things up. The Karen situation's in the back of his head at this point. And uh, that's when he just happens to look out the window. And he just happens to look at a car that's pulling in. And he just happens to notice someone walking out of the car that looked oddly familiar. And he just happened to notice that the person who looked so oddly familiar was carrying a freaking baseball bat, bro. And that's when he realized that the reason why this person looked so, so familiar was that this was the Karen. Yeah, the Karen that got arrested and tried to destroy the entire store three months ago has returned in broad daylight with the freaking baseball bat, dude. So yeah, immediately Aiden calls 911. Because at this point, you know, the Karen has been told never to return. And if she does, there's going to be trouble. And she's also returning with a baseball bat. So at this point, it just makes a lot of sense for Aiden to get ahead of the situation. So while he's on the phone, you know, he explains, like, this woman has caused damage before. She's appeared in the parking lot with a baseball bat very suspiciously. I just would feel better if someone came because I can almost guarantee something's about to go down. They, and they, this is kind of a local police department. So I think the person even literally remembers what happened before. So, uh, yeah, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we got you. We got you this. Don't worry about it. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, uh, the police are coming. But the police, it, it's going to take like 15, 20 minutes. So Aiden's a little nervous right now. But there's another cash, uh, cashier there. Someone wa- He's not the only one at the store at the moment. So he yells at them, says, hey, we got trouble. Person comes up. He's like, oh, my God, who's that? And Aiden looks at him and says, you know that Karen I was telling you about that one night? And the guy that Aiden's working with looks at him in a look of disbelief, like no way that's the same person. And Aiden has to break the bad news that yes, that is the same person, and that person is coming at them with a baseball bat. Yeah, not looking good for both of them right now. So anyways, right, you know, they're both like, okay, what is she going to do? And the Karen makes eye contact with Aiden. Aiden makes eye contact with the Karen. And the Karen starts bursting out into laughter as she approaches the place with a baseball bat. Yeah, not looking really good right now. So she starts walking towards them with a baseball bat and uh, goes up, like, opens up the door window and says, "You or not the door window, opens up the, the door. And Aiden is staring at her. And the other person Aiden is working with has frozen as well, and is just staring at her as well. And they're just looking at her, and she's just looking at them. And she has this big grin on her face. And let me just say that they do not have the same grin on their faces. To say the least, they do not have the same look of excitement and joy that the Karen is with them. They are not equally as happy that this is the case. Yeah, so they're all just making eye contact with the crazy deranged Karen who's standing in the door with a baseball bat right now. And she's just looking at them. And she says, you didn't think I'd be back. I told you. You should have given me that refund all that time ago. And now I had to, I'm taking my revenge. And immediately she turns to one of the windows. Boom. Hits it with the baseball bat. 
the window shatters. At this point, Aiden's real scared, understandably. Because look, when the Karen was destroying stuff in the store, he was really afraid that it was going to get out of control. But at that point, she was really just breaking stuff with her fists and throwing it on the ground. Like, he really thought, okay, if the Karen comes swinging for me or something like that, it really wouldn't be that big of an issue because, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not too scared. But now the Karen's coming in with an actual baseball bat. Like, that's kind of just a different story right there, bro. That's Loki just a different story. Like, if she swung at him and made contact... Dude, that could do a lot of damage. I don't care if she's barely able to swing it. Like, I don't care if she doesn't have the strongest swing. I don't care if she's not, like, in the MLB. I don't care if she doesn't bench press 325, bro. It doesn't matter. She just, she still has a baseball bat. That's a weapon right there. So Aiden kind of, like, backs up. He makes sure to keep his distance with the Karen. And him and his, like, co-worker are trying to keep their distance, right? And they're just waiting on the police to come. So the Karen is yelling at them, should have given me my discount, should have given me my discount, while slamming the bat into windows, cl basically clean the cash register right off, because she took a clean shot of the cash register with her baseball bat, boom, thing explodes, $10 bills fly everywhere. And then she starts going into the aisles, boom, boom, starts whacking stuff, and that's when the police officers get there. So the police officers get there, they see, they're alerted about the Karen, and I think one of them was actually there last time. So they know about the Karen. And they see her destroying, swinging around a full-fledged freaking baseball bat. So they're definitely on edge at this point. And they're just like, freeze! And the Karen turns around, looking all deranged and crazy, with an actual baseball bat, right? She has a baseball bat out, which is, that's pretty bad. So they're looking at her, and she looks at them, and she says, make me which was probably one of the worst responses that you could have given to two police officers when you're holding a baseball bat. Because one of them does make her. Pulls out the taser, which, I mean, look, you got someone swinging around a baseball bat. I'm not going in to sit down to have a polite conversation either. I get where he's coming from. Taser, zaps her, immediately goes to the ground. I mean, this Karen's not... Uh, this Karen isn't, like, some kind of, like, Iron Man, like, and he was hit with two bullets, and he stood there, unfazed, like, cue whatever music, no, 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 you know, I mean, if you're hit with a taser, you're going down, bro, so, yeah, Karen collapses, baseball bat f goes on the ground, one of the police officers rushes over to, like, separate her from the baseball bat, puts her at handcuffs, checks her to make sure she doesn't have, like, any other weapons or something like that, she does not, the other police officer goes over to, once making sure that the, uh, that the Karen is, like, contained or whatever, goes over to Aiden and his co-workers, asks, hey, do you, are you good? Did she hit you with a bat? Are there any damages to you or whatever? Are you guys good? They basically say, yeah, we're safe. Like, we always kept our distance or whatever. And, uh, yeah, one of the police officers who was there last time is like, is this really the same woman that was here, like, three months ago? And, uh, you know, at this point, Aiden recognized this guy from being there three months ago. He's like, yeah, this is the same woman. I haven't seen, and, you know, he says, have you seen her over the last, like, two or three months or however long ago it was? And he says, no, like, I have legitimately not seen her since. She also, the money went through that, like, she was charged for all the damages she did. She paid it through, so we kind of thought that we'd never see her again, but I guess not. So yeah, the police like take her away. Um, obviously, this was a lot more serious. Uh, I don't know exactly what the charges were, as I wasn't told exactly. Um, the because like, remember, this convenience store wasn't some big chain; it was like a mom and pop type location. So they were actually able, through insurance or whatever, or somehow they got the money back. They had to close down again for a second because now there's broken glass and windows and destroyed stuff. And, uh, yeah, the Karen was now very, very much, she was in bigger trouble. I don't know exactly what. I would assume that she served some jail time for that. I doubt she got off on, like, the second time. Because, like, that time she was swinging on them with a bat. 
Like that's some serious stuff you're doing right there. And let's call the subscriber who submitted this story, Brian. Real quick, I made a Twitter account last night and I'm seeing if we can get it to a thousand followers within the day. So go and follow my Twitter at Connor Pugs. A screenshot is on screen right now. Yeah, go do it. Anyways, let's get into the story. So this is probably one of my older subscribers who, who submitted this story because his name is Brian. And a couple of years ago, he married this girl named Kate. And they started dating, you know, a while ago. And when they started dating, Brian's mom was not a fan of Kate. And the thing was, Kate didn't have like a troubled background or she didn't have an extreme personality or anything. Kate was like the most standard like girl ever. Like it, it, imagine like your mom's perfect idea for someone to marry. That was basically Kate. To this day, Brian still has no idea why like his mom really hated Kate. But his, Brian's mom despised Kate from the first day that, you know, she came over. The first day that she came over, you know, Brian was introducing, you know, Kate to his family. And, you know, Brian's mom was just like really cruel to her at the dinner table. Like she was asking really weird questions. Like they were in college at that time. She's like, oh, what's your GPA? And when she said something that was pretty good, she's like, huh, I did better in school. Like, what's your major? And Kate said her major. And she's like, so you're just going to college for fun, huh? So anyways, right, Brian's mom has never been a fan of Kate for a very long time. However, that doesn't matter because Brian himself has been a fan of Kate for a while. By the way, you can listen to all of these podcast all these stories on spotify it's connor pugs it's also in the description please rate it five stars anyway so brian you know brian continued to date kate and you know kate and brian decided that they were going to be you know life kind of like lifetime partners and brian called up his parents before asking kate to marry her marry him and you know brian's dad was happy for him brian's dad was did really care in fact like brian's dad was separated from brian's mom so it's not like brian's mom was able to convince him otherwise brian's dad was happy for brian said hey but like that's so great i'm so excited for you but brian was about to call his mom and he just knew that something it just wasn't going to go down well so brian calls up his mom and he explains that he's going to marry kate and brian's mom's like brian this is a great mistake i'm telling you I just have a feeling, a gut feeling, that, like, she's terrible for you, and she's gonna cause ruin. Look, I've told, I've spoken on this channel a lot about, like, you know, trust your gut instincts, like, it's a good idea, but don't always do that. Sometimes, you have preconceived notions about people or biases that just are really not rooted in reality, and so... Trust your gut most of the times, but in this case, this was not a time to. And Brian says, like, Mom, like, I've been in a relationship with this girl for four years now. We've gone through ups and downs, and I am now at this point very confident I want to marry her. And, you know, Brian's mom's like, I won't allow it. And, you know, Brian's family wasn't like some crazy traditional family or anything where it's like, oh, it's your parents must say yes or it can't happen. So Brian was like, uh, okay. I'm sorry you don't like it. I'm just telling you because I have respect for you and I want you to know what's gonna happen and I want you to be in my life. And Brian's mom's like, fine, I understand I can't do anything about it, but just so you know, I'm not gonna be much nicer to her now that she's your wife or fiance. And Brian's like, okay, well, I'd like you to, but I guess I can't control you either. So Brian hang, hung up pretty angrily, but the rest of the day was pretty good because he eventually, you know, proposed to Kate and, you know, life was seeming pretty good. They start planning their wedding and, you know, Brian is like, you know, maybe we have a small wedding without my mother. And Kate's like, Brian, I know your mother hates me, but I need, like, I, I, I know that you'll want her there. Like, I know that we'll want everyone who we love to be at our wedding. And Brian's like, okay, just want to say, like, can't say I didn't warn you on this one. She's like, yes, I know. It's going to be something. It's going to be very hard. I, I am aware, but, you know, we need to invite her. So Brian eventually called up his mother and is like, hey, mom, I just want to let you know, you know, the wedding, you're formally invited. Uh, it's going to be on these dates. And Brian's mom is like, fine, I guess I'll show up. And Brian in his head is like, dude, I didn't even want to invite you because I knew that you're going to have crazy attitude problems. But Kate is insistent and, you know, she makes a good point and, you know, she's always right. So fine. And he's like, okay, well, here's the dates. Show up if you want. And Brian's mom's like, fine, I'll find room in my busy schedule. Like, dude, this is your own son's wedding. Your busy schedule will revolve around this or it should at least. 
So anyways, let's skip ahead to kind of like the couple days of the wedding. So if you don't know, there's like a like a, a like a recital dinner or like a, a, a rehearsal dinner, actually, is what I meant to say, where a lot of weddings will have like a dinner before where they have the bride, the groom, and most people invited at the wedding will get like get together at some restaurant or some place and they'll all like sit around a table and eat dinner. And it's not like enough. I don't know if it's like official part of like every wedding ceremony, but anyways, Brian and Kate decided to have this. And so anyways, they picked a spot that was like a restaurant that was close to the place of where the wedding was going to be the next day. And, you know, all the guests were kind of like funneling in, they had their assigned seats and everyone got there except, you know, Brian's mom. And Brian was kind of confused on like what was going, like what was happening. And that's when probably, this was the first, this was the first instance. It, it, what am I trying to say? This is the first example of Brian's mom being a crazy Karen. Because what happens, right, is Brian realizes, oh, the seat where my mom is, has reserved for her is empty. I wonder where she is. And that's when Brian hears a noise, a chant, like, Brian and Kate can't get married. Brian and Kate shouldn't be married. Brian and Kate can't get married. Brian and Kate shouldn't be married. On like that, from like the hallway. And Brian is like, what? He's just so confused, because he's like, who's chanting that like me and my soon-to-be wife can't and shouldn't be married? This is ridiculous. And that's when Brian's mother, like, marches into the room with a poster board with a big with a photo of like it's a photo of brian and kate like it like expanded so it's big and printed out with a big x through it and say it says cancel the marriage on the top and cancel the marriage on the bottom and she starts walking around chanting brian and kate can't be married brian and kate shouldn't be married can't solve the marriage can't solve the marriage can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. And starts like hopping around like a giddy schoolgirl. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. At this point, right, all the guests are kind of like, oh my God, let's go. They're all kind of like mumbling like about each other. And that's when, you know, Brian is like, mom, he stands up. He's like, what is this? And Brian's mom's like, oh, Brian, sweetie, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here as your mother. And I'm doing my duty as the mother. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. And Brian's like, Mom, what are you doing? Like, this is insane. And she's like, you know, no, no, no. You know what is insane, buddy? Is this marriage? Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. Brian's like, Mom, stop. Like, like, I invited you here because this is like our big day and I wanted you to be a part of it. You're like, I invited you to the dinner so that we could have a nice conversation and maybe you and Kate can reconcile your differences. And Brian's mom's like, oh, that's never going to happen. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. Can't sell the marriage. And Brian's like, oh, my God. So he walks over. And he's like, Mom, if you're not going to eat dinner with us, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And she's like, you're kicking out your own mother from the, from, from the, from the dinner before the wedding? From the rehearsal dinner? You would do that? And Brian's like, well... Yes, if you continue walking around with a poster board with an X through me and my fiance's face screaming, cancel the marriage. Uh, Brian and Kate can't be married. Brian and Kate shouldn't be married. Like, mom, what? That chant isn't even that good. What's going on here? You know, at this point, right, you know, she's like, fine, I'm going to go protest outside. So <laughs> Brian's Karen mom starts walking out being like, can't sell the marriage, can't sell the marriage. Brian and Kate can't be married. Brian and Kate shouldn't be married. And they're like legitimately like, she, she stands outside of the restaurant and you can hear faintly because everyone's super quiet after she leaves for like a minute. And you can hear very faintly, Brian and Kate can't be married. Brian and Kate can't be married. Can't sell the wedding, can't sell the wedding, can't. <laughs> At this point, Brian kind of like stands up and is like, hey guys, I'm sorry for that. Like, my mom's a little crazy. Like, ha ha ha. Everyone kind of laughs a little bit, both because it was kind of a funny situation, but mostly because it was an incredibly awkward situation. They're all like, eh, yeah, I remember when that happened at my wedding. Not. 
So anyways, Brian sat down, and Brian and Kate and some other very close family members near them discussed the wedding tomorrow. And Brian's like, oh my god, I can't believe my mother's doing this. I, like, I was on the fence of inviting her, and Kate's like, I'm so sorry for making you do that. And Brian's like, no, no, no. You had really good intentions. You wanted all the people we love to be here, and you did what was right. He said, now we just got to make sure that, you know, the wedding goes off without a hitch. And let me just say that that was not the case. In fact, that Karen was about to pull off one of the craziest heists in Karen history, believe it or not. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Karen down below. I'm going to try and heart a bunch of comments to say Karen. I'm just curious to see the names and faces of people who made it this far. Also, if you want to continue supporting the channel or to help boost me in the algorithms, right, of YouTube, all you got to do is just keep on watching these videos after this one or maybe at a later point of the day. Just keep watching the videos. It really does help. Lots of watch time helps the channel. And please let me know in the comment section both how many videos you've watched or are planning to watch today. And then also, what are you doing while watching the videos? For example, some people have been telling me that watching my videos helps them go to sleep. And honestly, sleep's a hard thing. It's an important thing. So I'm honored that I can help you do that. And by the way, just a few things. If you want to like submit your own stories, go to my Instagram at Connor Pugs. That's where you can DM me the stories. Please follow the new Twitter account. I'd love to get a thousand followers in a day. And that's one of the best ways I can talk to you guys. Join the Discord server, and also make sure that if you want to listen on Spotify that you do, and rate us, rate us, rate me five stars on there, follow, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. And uh, I think that's all the plugging I have to do. Leave a like in the video for your free nothing. I'm bringing that back. And let's, get, let's just get back to the stories, guys. Also, code ConnorPugs 10% off gamer subs. Please buy it. It's helping you out and helping me out. Anyway, so Brian and Kate are kind of worried. And they go to bed, and they're in the same bed, and Kate kind of, like, rolls over, and it's like, like, Brian, like, I'm worried about your mom. Brian's like, me too. And he says, you know what? You know what? This is our day. For the next 24 hours, let's make sure that we remember that this is our day. This is not my mom's day. This is not Uncle Joe's day. This is not your day or my day. It is our day. And let's make sure that everyone knows that, no matter what my mom does. And Brian says, hey, you know, the, like, the security guards we hired? I'm going to tell them that if my mom does anything crazy or tries to run on stage and punch you in the face and Kate kind of gets nervous, he's like, I don't think she's actually going to do that. But if she does, they'll make sure like that she's banned, that they'll, they'll take care of it and they'll ban her from the wedding and we don't even have to worry about it. And Kate felt a little bit more reassured and they went to bed. The next day they wake up and it's their wedding day. It's huge. It's stressful. It's awesome. It is all the life and emotion that, you know, it encapsulates the human spirit. You'll love to see it. And sure enough, right, the day of the wedding, you know, they get there. There's all these people rushing around, the bridesmaids, the hair, the makeup, you know, the best man, all that kind of good stuff. People are in the, like, the, the lunch room because people are getting, like, buffet-style lunch before the wedding. It's awesome. It's cool. You'll love to see it, all this fun stuff. And that's when someone runs up to Brian and says, hey, Brian, bad news. And Brian's like, oh my God, there's no way. And, and the guy's like, ah, look, we put, the, we put the, we, the wedding rings, you know, we put them aside in this drawer last night. The whole place was locked up. And then when we came here this morning, we opened it up and the, wed the, re the wedding rings were still there. And then I just went back like 10 minutes ago and the wedding rings, they're gone. Brian, I don't know what happened. The wedding rings are gone. Hmm. Sorry, I just took a sip of water so my voice doesn't explode. And he's like, what do you mean the rings are gone? He's like, dude, I don't know. I came here this morning. They were still here, but I checked in 10 minutes ago, and they're gone. They're gone, Brian. So Brian's like, all right, you know, check the security camera footage. And so anyways, Brian calls up one of the uh, people who work there, one of the staff, and they're like, hey, the, the rings just got stolen. We need to check the cameras. And they're like, oh, my God, 100%, like right away. And they had about an hour before the wedding, so there's a little bit of buffer time, but Brian, under no circumstances, was going to tell Kate during this time of massive stress for her, right before the wedding, right, she, he was not going to tell her that the rings had been stolen. That is just simply not going to happen. So Brian and the security guard and the guy who came over to tell him that the rings were gone, they all rushed over, and they all rushed over to the uh, kind of the... Uh, the, the place where they have the footage, and they look at it, and Brian, in his head, you know, he thinks that there's a chance that it was, like, someone stealing from them. He thinks that there's a chance that 
I don't know. Like that someone was like, I, I don't know, trying to steal the rings. But Brian knew deep down it was his mother trying to sabotage the wedding as she tried to do last night. And sure enough, you see the security camera. It's Brian's mom. She walks over, opens up the drawer, looks in both directions, takes the rings and runs away, right? So immediately Brian's like, all right, find my mom. And his mom was sitting in like the lunch room. She got her buffet lunch and she was sitting alone at the table. Cause after last night's charade of like the Brian and Kate shouldn't be married, cancel the wedding, cancel. After that whole nonsense, right? Not a lot of the, you know, the people at the part or the party at the wedding really wanted to be friends with her or wanted to get to know her story. They just didn't feel like, you know, they didn't want to spend the energy on that. So she was sitting alone. And, you know, sure enough, you know, Brian goes up to her and says, Hey, Mom, is there anything you want to tell me by chance? Like, anything you want me to know? And Brian's mom's like, No, I've just, you know, I'm just sitting here and I want to say the food's very nice. I just wanted to say that. I like the food a lot. And Brian just looks at her. And he's just like, Mom, I know what you did. She's like, What? What did I do? I don't know what I did. Do you know what I did? She, and he's like, yes, mom, there's security cameras. And she's like, oh. She's like, and he's like, mom, how could you steal the wedding rings on the day of my wedding? Like, that's insane. And she's like, I'm doing all of this for you. You can't see it. You don't understand that that witch has put a spell on you. And she's going to take all your money and your organs and sell them on the black market. And, uh. He's just like, what? Mom, what? So at this point, Brian's like, Mom, I only have 45 minutes before the wedding starts. Just tell us where the rings are. We won't make a fuss about this. And she's like, no, I'm doing this for you, Brian. You should know. And Brian immediately reaches in her purse, goes in the hidden pocket that he knows about because this is his mom, like kind of fumbles around there for a second, finds the two rings. She's like, Brian, take your filthy little paw out of my purse. And then Brian pulls out the two rings out of her purse. And she's like, turns around. She's like, this boy stole from me. And Brian's like, mom, shut it. Like the two security guards that you were yelling at were the ones that showed me the security tape where you stole these two rings that are in my hand from me. Like, can you just let me have a day with my fiance? This is, mom, this isn't your day. This is not your day. This is my day. Like, you have to understand that this is my day. And you need to let me have my day. And you need to stop trying to ruin this for all of us. You're invited to the ceremony, but you are one bad move from being kicked out. From last night to this shenanigans, you're on very, very, very thin ice. And I need you to know that. And, you know, when, when he was saying that, Brian, like, kind of mistakenly put the two rings down on the table. I mean, he didn't think anything of it, but he was just put them down. And the thing is... His mom might have been a Karen, but she didn't have the typical Karen build of like 600,000 pounds and evil. She was actually like still pretty relatively fit. She would go to like her little yoga thing every week or something. And so, you know, Brian, Brian's mom was like, wait, what's that? Over, like, what's going on over there? The, you know, the oldest trick in the book, I'm telling you, the oldest trick in the book, and both Brian and the guy he was with will turn around Brian's mom snatches both of the rings, gets up, and sprints out of there, bolts out, bolts out to the door. And Brian turns around, sees his mom running away, looks down at the table, sees that the rings are gone, and yells out, like, security guards, she's taking the rings. And, like, at this point, everyone who's just enjoying the buffet turns around. And Brian does immediately says, ha ha, nothing to see, and then sprints off running after his mom. The two security guards go running after them as well. So Brian's mom goes outside, takes a left, is running down the road. And Brian and the security guards, while well, Brian's mom isn't like, you know, I don't know, like immobile or anything, but she can still like, she's, she's slower than Brian and the two security guards. So they're starting to gain on her and Brian's like, mom, why can't you let me have this day? And she's like, I'm doing this for you, sweetie. And she goes up and she finds a drain. And she literally is like holding the two rings above the drain. And Brian's like, mom, no. And she's like, nobody take one step closer or these rings drop down. At this point, right, is Brian and one of the security guards. The other security guard, seeing what happened, turned around and ran around the block. So basically they were now in a neighborhood that was like a couple minutes out. 
and you know the security card ran around the back so you know in neighborhoods they're kind of like squares or whatever and you can go down blocks so what the security guard was doing was he was trying to go around the block to kind of blindside her and get her up from behind and the karen's like brian you should have listened to me kate is no good for you in fact she's poison for you and sure enough right you know the security guard is starting to walk up behind brian's mom brian sees this and is like oh okay okay i gotta keep her attention so she's, he's like mom like at least reason with me like why is it so important that you ruin my wedding and she's like i had a gut feeling about kate this entire time and i went to my tarot card reader and my you know uh psychic and they both said that something disturbing was on my mind, which means that they agree with me that Kate is bad news. She has bad karma written all over her. Brian's like, Mom, I just don't understand. Like, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you just feel it? And Brian's trying to, like, distract her and drag this out so the security guard, the second one who is coming up from behind her, can, you know, successfully grab the rings without them falling down the drain because at this point, if he makes one move towards, like, his mom, his mom is going to drop these rings down the drain. And at this point, his mom is so, like, infatuated with the fact that her son is actually speaking to her because, like, she has not been getting speaking privileges for a little bit for being insane, that she's like, oh, yes, yes, let me, let me plead my case to you. And as she's about to plead her case, she feels her hand be, like, grabbed by another hand. The security guard rips the two rings out of them, puts it in his pocket, and is like, ma'am, like, you're not allowed back. And she's like, what? Me? Why am I not allowed back? No! No, this is my own son's wedding. And Brian's like, Mom, I literally told you if you did one more thing, I, I, I gave you fair warning. I said if you did one more insane thing that you were going to be banned. She's like, but it wasn't insane. It was for your good. He says, no, no, stop. I literally, th no, 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 no. I'm dragging the line here. You're not going to manipulate me anymore. After saying that, you took the rings and threatened to throw them down. Like, these are expensive, Mom. These aren't free. These aren't free. Like, these are expensive, and this is just to prove a point that your stupid little tarot card reader said this, or that you had you had the vibes in the air. No, Mom, that's all nonsense. That's all BS. That's all in your head. You just don't like her. You can't get over the fact that you're wrong. And his mom's just standing there. He's like, I I'm going back. I have 15 minutes. I still need to get ready. I'm going back. He looks at the two officers, and he says, this woman's not allowed inside the premises. And she's like, no. Nah. Anyways, eventually, Brian goes back inside, gets his stuff all ready, and it's for time for the wedding. So it's this typical ceremony. He walks down, stands at the very end, or at the very front, I should say. And that's when Kate is walked down by her father. Kate stands up there. They're looking at all the people in the pews. Um, and Kate kind of like turns over and kind of whispers to him like, where's your mom? And Brian's like, I had to go deal with her. <laughs> and Kate's like, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know what happened, which is a smart answer because she would probably go crazy as any rational person would when they heard what was about to happen or what happened. Real quick, the Karen's not done. I just want to let you know. The Karen is coming back. But sure enough, you know, they say their vows to each other, put the rings on the fingers, you know, they have a big makeout session. They go to 12th, 10th base, you know, how weddings normally go. And sure enough, everyone's clapping. It's great. They're walking out. Everyone's clapping. Life is good. So the final thing is the kind of like the dinner that is after the wedding, the final part of the wedding. So anyways, it's time for the, for the dinner. And the, remember, Brian's mom is still banned from the dinner because, you know, she's still just banned from anything wedding related. Brian was honestly at this point so angry with her that he wasn't sure when he was going to speak to her again. However, you know, his heart started to melt a little bit. He's like, ah, you know what, maybe I'll talk to her after the wedding. And, you know, I just don't want, you know, my family members to not get along. Like, it's just so unfortunate that my mom and my wife now at this point, like, can't get along. So they're sitting at the dinner. And a lot of times at, like, uh, the dinner after the wedding, people will make, like, a toast. So they'll go up there, they'll have their glass, they'll ding it, and then they'll basically just talk about, you know, the bride, the groom, the wedding, how lovely the day is, like, the, the atmosphere and the air, stuff like that. And, uh, unfortunately, the security guards... There was only two of them, and they weren't necessarily guarding the entrances at all time. So guess who snuck back in? Yes, the Karen. The Karen snuck her little butt back in and found a way to kind of hide while the reception dinner was going on. 
And uh, sure enough, people are going up there. They're saying, oh, like, I'm so, so, like, excited to see you, like, or not so excited to see you, but, like, I'm so, like, this was such a beautiful day, you guys. Oh, my God, my best friend Kate is getting married. All that kind of, like, typical stuff. Like, they're saying, like, toast. They're saying, oh, it's so wonderful to see you guys up here, and you're married, and my heart is melting. And that's when, like, they put down, you know, the pers- the last person to make a toast steps down, and you know who steps up? Brian's mom. And she takes a glass and base it and throw, you know, so normally what happens, right? Normally what happens is you take a fork or a utensil and you gently ding the glass. That's to get people's attention. Brian's mom takes an empty glass and chucks it on the ground and basically gets people's attentions by the sound of glass shattering. And she like is like, you, and points to Brian and Kate. He's like, you two ruined my special day. Everyone's like, bro, what, your special day? Huh? What do you mean your special day? And she's like, I've been trying to warn you, Brian, that this cake girl is the worst. I've been trying to say this for the longest time, but you refuse to listen to my logic. She's like, I tried to stop the wedding last night by protesting it, yet none of you fools, points to everyone in the audience, none of you fools decided to do what was right. I tried to steal the rings away to make sure that the wedding could not go through, but these moron security guards stopped me. At this point, Kate turns over to Brian. She's like, Brian, she stole the rings? He's like, yeah, I didn't want to tell you at the time. Seemed like I didn't want to ruin your day. I was going to tell you eventually. She's like, oh my God, your, your mom's crazy. And he's like, ah, t- tell me. Yeah, tell me something I don't know, Kate. And sure enough, she goes in and be like, and this is where I put my foot down. And she turns to, like, the officiate, like, the kind of, like, the person who made, like, the wedding official because he, like, was able to stay and, like, eat dinner with them. She turns to the person, like, the priest or whatever and says, undo the wedding. By the power of God, I commence you to undo the wedding. And he's like, that's not how it works, ma'am. She's like, undo it. Divorce them. Divorce them now. Undo your spell of wedding. At this point, you know, Brian's like, oh, my God, I have to go up there. So Brian walks up and is like, mom. I asked you to leave. And she's like, Brian, you don't know what's good for you, but as your mother, I know what's good for you always. I always know what's good for you. Yeah. Brian, Brian, no. I, stop the wedding. Stop the wedding. Cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel it. I'm going to get a, uh, my Facebook group to come after your Facebook, Kate. They're coming for you. And that's when Brian's like, security guards. Security guards come over. And as they're kind of pushing, you know, Brian's mom out of the building, she's like, Brian, you won't get away with this. You won't get away with this. And turns to Kate and be like, this is not the last of me. I will get you two to divorce if it's the last thing I do as she's being dragged out the door boom door slams once again there's just a silence and you know brian goes up there and kind of is like hey guys just want to say thank you all so much for coming to my wedding i love each and all every single one of you even if some of you are, uh, are kind of in the doghouse right now insinuating his mother and he's like i just want to say apologies for any uh, distractions that might have happened last night or recently uh, by recently i mean a couple seconds ago I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, don't, don't let that destroy the mood or the atmosphere. Some people just don't get it, and that's okay. I would like you all, you know, to have a great rest of your night. Remember, dancing will be in an hour. I want to see all of you guys on the dance floor, and just thank you guys so much for coming. And everyone claps him out, and he walks back to the table, and he sits down next to Kate. And Kate's like, you know, this was a pretty great wedding. And let's just jump right into it and call the subscriber Gabby. So anyways, this all started one day when Gabby was in the dog park, and because Gabby had a dog, it was like, it was a smaller dog, I don't know exactly what type of dog it was, but it was like, maybe it was one of those like white fluffy ones that isn't so big, but it was like a smaller dog, it wasn't a larger dog, that's just kind of an important detail for you to know, um, also because the Karen probably couldn't abduct a large dog anyways, but Gabby was at this dog park that she would go to with her dog on the weekend, so every Saturday, you know, she would drive over and, you know, bring the dog with her, 
and, you know, they'd be able to walk around, the dog would be able to sniff all these new smells, would be able to see all the other dogs were in the dog park as well. And that's when one day Gabby met, you know, the Karen, who is also at this dog park. So Gabby kind of recognized this older woman who has always kind of been at the dog park, but Gabby and her have never interacted until before this moment, right? So Gabby, this is just a normal Saturday where she's with, you know, her dog in the dog park and, you know, they're just hanging out, chilling. Life is good. Gabby's dog is sniffing some, uh, you know, sniffing some other dog's butts. You know, standard dog affair. And that's when Gabby's dog turns, looks at the Karen, and barks. And look, it's a freaking dog. Oh, no, it barked at you? Oh, no, that's crazy. No, it's normal. It's standard. But, you know, the Karen was like, oh, good heavens, did your dog just bark at me? And Gabby's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am. He's, I'm, I'm, he's still, he's a little feisty sometimes, haha. <laughs> Normally, right, you know, I'm, I'm a dog owner, and, you know, sometimes my dog is just barks at random people. Dude, that's, that's what they do, bro. That's kind of just how they are. Some of them are better behaved, behaved than others. And it's really like, I don't get personally offended when a dog barks at me. But anyways, right, the Karen is like, you should teach your dog some manners. Like, you definitely have not ta taken good care of your dog if your dog is barking at random people and going on like that. And, you know, Gabby was a little offended. She was like, what do you mean I, was, I haven't taken good care of my dog? Like, sure, my dog barked at you, but my dog doesn't bark that much. And also, that's not the worst thing. Hey, you know, you know, I, I could understand where you're coming from if my dog was going around biting everyone or like attacking them or like trying to eat some babies or something sure fair enough I don't know if she said that last part but like I get that but dude she just barked at you but the Karen was for some reason completely convinced with herself that like if your dog barks at someone you know you haven't spent the time as a dog owner to make sure that they're I, I don't know I honestly don't know where the Karen was coming from on this, but the Karen kind of just went on and on again about like how like, oh, how Gabby very clearly has not taken care of her dog or whatever and how she's a terrible pet owner. Remember, this is all because the dog barked at the Karen once. Probably because the, the, the dog just got the bad vibes off the Karen. The dog was ahead of the curve. You know, sometimes dogs have these senses that, like, you can't really pick up on. And I think the dog picked up on, like, how insane the Karen was here, bro. I, I swear, I really think that that's the truth here. But anyways, right, so the Car so eventually Gabby's like, all right, well, that's fine, ma'am. Because the Karen is continuously going on about, oh, you're such a bad dog owner, man. Stuff like that. So Gabby eventually just gets out of there and goes to a different part of the dog park. And she starts speaking to her dog and she's like, all right, buddy, let's not bark at anyone crazy like that again. Like you, most people don't care, but every once in a while you'll get someone like that. And honestly, Karen, uh, Gabby thought that, okay, well, I'm probably not never going to interact with this Karen again because sure, like, sure, I'll probably see her again at the dog park. Or sure, maybe, like, I'll run into her on the street or something. But, like, I, if I see her, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be... I'm going to steer clear, you know, away from her. Because, like, bro, I'm not trying to have another conversation with this woman. Definitely not a productive time trying to have any conversation with her. So Gabby was like, all right, well, this is kind of the last time I'm going to see her. And this was until about, you know, a week later when Gabby was at her own house, right? And she was just walking her dog around the block. However, she was walking out of her house, right, with her dog. So it was very clear that she was coming out of that house. And that's when she made eye contact with the Karen, right? And the Karen just happened to be walking around the neighborhood. And they make eye contact with each other. And the Karen is like, wait, I know you. I know you. Oh, there goes Clara. She's barking at something. Karen's like, I know you. You're from... You're the bad dog owner. And Gabby's like, bro, you can't be serious, bro. Like, uh, really? So Gabby kind of just looks at the Karen and thinks to herself, wow, well, looks like I do have to deal with this woman one more time. And Gabby's like, uh, I think you're remembering wrong. Because she's like, yeah, I could probably just, like, <laughs> gaslight this woman to think that her memory's going bad. I'm not trying to deal with her, bro. And sure enough, right, you know, the Karen's like, no, that's definitely you. You were the, you know, the terrible dog owner that your malicious dog barked at me. And Gabby was like, have you really never had a dog bark at you, ma'am? And she completely ignores that question just to continue to, you know, berate Gabby and be like, you're the worst dog owner I've ever met. And you know what? Like, it, it, it's not the dog's fault. It's your fault. That dog, all that dog needs is a bit of training from me. At this point, Gabby's like, 
wait a minute, so you're trying to like pitch me a course or something? Am I being, am I being sold at right now? Like, uh, what? And, you know, and the Karen says, you know what? Because I am so kind hearted, because I have such a large heart, right? Because I have love for so many people. And Gabby's like, all right, ma'am, let, get to the point. And, and it, I mean, she doesn't say that, but that's what she's thinking. And the Karen goes, I, you know what? I will make a very large sacrifice. I will offer that I will take that dog off your hands and I will give it a truly a good home. And Gabby was just so shocked at this point because she's like, all right, this, me- like, this woman comes up to me and starts yelling at me and then says that she will take the massive sacrifice of stealing my dog. What? And Gabby's like, no, are, are you insane? And the Karen's like, the- just more evidence, just more evidence that you were the worst. And that the reason why your dog sucks is because you suck. It's not the dog's fault. It's yours. And Gabby is just, she's just so blown away at this point. She's like, the audacity of this woman. God damn. <laughs> no, but anyways, you know, Gabby's like, all right, ma'am, no. Um, I'm now actually going to go walk my dog as I take care of my dog. And my dog is quite well behaved, actually, compared to most dogs. Quite well behaved. And the Karen's like, fine. I didn't, like, that. <sighs> I can barely handle this level of disrespect and, you know, uh, disrespect to your elders anyways. Like, have, you know, have fun torturing that dog. And the Karen just, like, kind of, like, pouts and stomps away. And Gabby's like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't think I was going to have an interaction with that woman again, but I definitely did not think that that was going to... I definitely did not think that that was going to be my interaction, like, nevertheless. Like, that, that's insane. So Gabby walks her dog, you know, because they walk around in the back. And so a couple days go by, and something when, like, Gabby and her mom are in the house, they have a backyard that is practically fenced in. Like, it's not, you could go break into it, or you could, as you'll see in a second, you could push into it, you could kind of break into it, you know. But it's, the dog never leaves, so what Gabby and Gabby's mom uh, let the dog do is, like, if the dog kind of goes to the door and kind of, like, scratches or whines near it, they'll let the dog out, and they'll let the dog out into the backyard, and when the dog wants to come back in, the dog will just kind of, like, paw on the door again. So basically, the dog has a pretty big backyard that, you know, the dog can go around, can sniff all the smells, can dig up dirt, can go fight with some squirrels. Kind of just allows the dog to be outside without any supervision or anything like that. And for that, you know, the dog has also not ever tried to escape before. So one of these days when the dog was let outside, it had been a couple hours and it was about time for, you know, Gabby to walk the dog. So Gabby looks around the house and is like, okay, well, the dog was probably in the backyard and he goes downstairs and goes to the backyard, and the backyard's empty. So Gabby, like, walks out and really looks around, right? She looks around the corners, she looks behind the trees, she looks in the bushes, and that's when, you know when you, like, have lost something or someone, if it's your dog, but especially for me when I've lost, like, my wallet or something, or my phone or something, and you start looking around, and you get start getting that really terrible feeling knowing that it's lost, and you just, you, you continue to, like, look at all these places. Like, you continue to look under things, and you continue to look, even though you know that there's, like, no chance that they're there. Like, I'll look in drawers I've never opened for years, being like, please be in here, even though it's obviously not, right? And you just get that sinking feeling of, you know, it's gone. And Gabby was getting that feeling of, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My dog's gone. Like, where's my dog? So immediately, you know, she calls up her mom and her mom is like out somewhere. She's like, mom, mom, I think the dog escaped. And, and her mom's like, what? That, the dog's never ran away. And Gabby's like, I don't know what happened, but she's not here. So Gabby's mom immediately rushes back. And while Gabby's mom is coming back to the house, Gabby once again is just kind of going, looking again, looks in the backyard again, looks throughout the house again, walks around the block, kind of like the walk that they normally do, like the walk that she normally brings the dog on. The dog is nowhere to be seen. So when Gabby's mom comes back, they both are kind of like, oh my God, what's going on? And Gabby's mom's like, okay, well, your dog probably hasn't gone that far. I mean, maybe, but like, small little dog. How far could have really gone? Probably just got confused and lost and this is walking around. So Gabby and Gabby's mom start like going around the neighborhood in their car, looking around. Once again, they're just kind of like driving around, looking for the dog. Gabby has the window rolled down, yelling its name out. I don't know. We can give it a name. Um, (laughs) I don't know. Give it a name or something. I I, I don't know. Anyways, so they're driving around 
And, you know, Gabby's mom's like, um, I'm going to keep driving and looking. If you want to just, like, start scouting out yourself, like, I don't, I don't really know what to do. I'm going to go on, like, Facebook and post on, like, the neighborhood group the like, photos of her dog saying, like, have you seen this dog? We have not, like, she escaped or something like that. Gabby's like, all right, well, just let me know if, like, anyone knows anything or just, because, like, Gabby was freaking out right now. This was her dog. This was her little baby. And, this dog has never ran away. This dog has never even attempted to run away. This dog is hesitant doing a different, like, path. Like, the dog loves routine. Why would it change it up? It just didn't make a lot of sense to Gabby. And later, and, or, I mean, if you can see the title of this video, you'll know exactly why it made no sense. So within, very soon, you will see one of the craziest things that a Karen has ever done. But real quick, if you made it as far into the video, comment Karen down below. I'll try and hard a bunch of comments that say that. And also, if you do want to support the channel, uh, all you got to do is at some point, maybe after this video, I say this every time, by the way, or maybe later, um, sit down and watch a bunch of videos, or as I say, binge watch the videos, maybe watch one, two, three, whatever. And let me know what you're doing while watching the videos. Are you like playing a video game? Are you drawing, animating, cleaning your room? Or do these videos help you go to sleep? I no longer take offense to that because I watch, uh, I watch like King the Hill to go to sleep. I actually like that show, man. It's like, it's a good show. I actually like it. Anyways, anyways, let's just get back to the story. Stuff's, stuff's getting interesting. So Gabby is like going around the neighborhood. She's kind of like doing a light job or jog or whatever, yelling out the name of the dog, going around, going around. And that's when... That's when she hears a bark. And you might be thinking, all right, bro, it's a bark. <laughs> like, come on. Dog barks kind of sound the same. However, Gabby was convinced that that was the bark of her dog. So she immediately starts yelling the name again, and she hears the bark again. So she starts to try and, like, figure out where this bark is coming from. She tries to, like, locate the source of, like, the noise. Because, yes, it could be another dog, but this is the first lead that she's gotten ever since her dog was gone. There's not a single other clue or lead or anything. So she's like, screw it, I'm taking this, I'm putting all my chips in. And Gabby, like, goes in the direction of the bark, and it gets her to this house. It's very, very strange, right? And she looks in the backyard of this house, and there's, like, a, the, the only thing that's, like, whole, like between, like, Gabby and the backyard is this row of, like, these shrubs, right? So Gabby kind of, like, pries the shrubs apart because she hears the barking from the backyard. And that's when she sees a dog sitting in the backyard, right, barking. And it's a little white dog. And Gabby's like, okay, I can't be 100% sure. But and in the middle of her thought, the dog kind of, like, moves its head and Gabby sees the collar that's still on the dog. The collar is like a red and black stripe one, and it's the one that Gabby's dog had on before it, like, the dog was abducted, basically. And Gabby's like, there is no way that at this point, this is a coincidence. And this is when Gabby is starting to realize, why is this dog here? Did he sneak through? Like, well, what happened? And that's when Gabby is about to go into the backyard when she hears a door open. So she doesn't push her way into the backyard, but she can, continues to watch. And she hears a door open, and she hears someone walk out. And someone walks out with a bowl of water and puts it down. And guess who it is? It's the Karen. And Gabby's like, oh my god. Oh my god. So anyways, Gabby like kind of retreats for a second, stays behind the shrubs so she can't be seen, takes out her phone, and sends a message to her mom. Explains like massive blocks of text explaining everything. And then also follow, follows it up by like, I can't call right now. I think I'm going to try and get the dog. I don't want to be caught, right? So sends the messages, closes out her phone, and is kind of just waiting. So Gabby like, you know, looks in and sees that, like, you know, the, the door is closed, so the Karen is no longer in the backyard. But Gabby is also aware that, you know, the that there's a lot of windows, that, you know, movement in the backyard, that the dog, you know, Gabby's dog will probably start barking a lot and making a lot of noise when Gabby comes to pick the dog up because, like, the dog's going to be so excited to see that Gabby's there to pick him up. Stuff like that, right? So Gabby's like, all right, I kind of got one shot with this. So Gabby kind of like pushes through the shrubs. It's kind of difficult. And Gabby's looking around and she sees like, you know, she's like, all right, I'm going to have to like 
really like really like sprint right i'm gonna have to really send it like when i get the dog because going through these shrubs are gonna be hard or whatever she pushes through like the bushes and she's fully through and all of a sudden she hears a barrage of barking it's her dog her dog's running up to her kind of basically jumps into her arms the dog has had a terrible day was abducted by someone right Apparently, it must have been that the Karen somehow broke into the backyard of Gabby's house because, because like, right, the Karen now knew where Gabby lived after they had that interaction and probably scouted out her house and probably went back another day, another day noticed the dog was there, and then either picked it up that day or a later day, kind of, like, broken or whatever. So Gabby, reunited with her dog, is about to turn around when she hears, Stop! And Gabby turns around again. And sure enough, the door is wide open, and the Karen is standing there. And Gabby yells, like, why did you steal my dog? And the Karen's like, I didn't steal anything. I was just doing, you know, the service that, as a dog owner should. Like, I was taking that dog away from the horrible life that he had with you, obviously, by the way it acted, the way it lashed out to me. It was lashing out in pain. It needed me to save it. And Gabby's like, first of all, that's ridiculous. My dog simply barked at you, probably because it realized that you were a dog kidnapper. Second of all, you can't go around stealing dogs. You can't be doing that. That's not your place. That's not your place to choose these things. And the Karen is like, I did what I know is right. And now I will do what I know is right by taking that dog back. So Gabby is like, oh, hell nah, bro. Turns around, pushes through the bushes really quickly. And the Karen's like, no, get back here. And Gabby's like all the way through except her leg when she feels a tug. And sure enough, right, she feels two hands on her leg. And she's trying to pull through the bushes, right? And the Karen's like, get back here. And the Karen is legitimately pulling on her leg because she's like in between the line of bushes and then Gabby starts shaking her leg, shaking it, and then the Karen loses grip. She pulls through. Gabby kind of falls forward a little bit, but lets go of the dog before she, like, lands on the dog. The, lo the dog jumps down and starts barking or whatever. Gabby picks the dog back up and starts running. And that's when Gabby's like, all right, I think I lost her. So Gabby pulls out her phone, calls up her mom, and her mom's like, oh, my God, what happened? She's like, I just, like, picked up the dog from the crazy Karen's house. I'm at 123 uh, El 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 Elmer Street or whatever like, can you come pick me up? And that's when Gabby's like, actually, mom, um, uh, I'm gonna need you to come here kind of quick. I, I don't know where the Karen is. Wait, mom, I I'm gonna have to get back to you. And her mom's like, what? Gabby, what's going on? What's going on? Because that's when Gabby, like, she thought that she, because she can outrun the Karen, right? But that's when she starts seeing a car coming at her. And sure enough, looking into the windshield, it is the Karen driving that car. So Gabby starts running, right? And Gabby starts running, hops a fence, goes into another backyard. Dogs that are chained up in that backyard start, like, yelling or screaming or yelling. Start barking at her. Gabby jumps another fence, and she sees, like, she hears a car go, turns a corner, right? She's like, oh, shoot, she's on me. So Gabby goes in, and she finds the dog park, right? Because the dog park's really close to where the Karen lives and kind of close to where Gabby lives. Gabby runs into the dog park, and obviously you can't drive a car into the dog, dog park. So Karen parks, gets out, and that's when Gabby calls her mom again. She's like, the Karen is chasing me at the car, and Gabby's mom's like, oh my god, this is insane. She's like, mom, I'm at the dog park. I need you to idle at, you know, 748, like, East Street, because that's, like, the other side of the park. The park's actually really large, so what Gabby was going to do is she was going to, like, lead the Karen through the park, and Gabby's mom was supposedly going to be at the other side of the park and was going to be waiting for her, right? And then, like, she'd jump in the car and get away. And Gabby's mom's like, I'll be there in, like, two minutes. It's really close, right? So Gabby starts running through the park. And, you know, she sees the Karen far away. But the Karen's coming at her kind of like speed power walking or whatever and yelling at her the entire time, being like, come back here, come back here. So Gabby's running, 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 gets to the end of the park, doesn't see her mom's car, and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. The Karen starts approaching slowly but surely. Like, if her mom isn't here in the next two to three minutes, the Karen will catch up. And as the Karen's getting closer and closer and closer, Gabby sees her mom's car pull up, and she just runs the other side, gets in, comes in, and Gabby's mom's like, oh my god, what? And Gabby's like, no time, go, go, go. So Gabby's mom, you know, gets in the car, drives off, and the Karen's yelling the whole time. 
So, you know, Gabby and Gabby's mom drive around for a little bit before they go back home. Gabby explains literally everything, and, you know, the, uh, you know, Gabby's mom's like, all right, well, um, first of all, we should probably get some of the fence in our backyard now so that that can't happen. Um, we should install, like, a security camera. And then also, can we call the police? So Gabby's mom actually calls, like, the non-emergency line, so not 911, but the other one, explains the situation, they say, wow, like, that's insane. Like, do you, can you give a description, like, of this woman, because we'll go talk to her. Basically explain the, like, if she does something like this again, there will be consequences. So Gabby starts explaining, like, what this woman looks like, and they're like, oh, Shelby, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And Gabby's like, you know this woman? And the non-emergency police officer was like, yes, we get calls about her, like, every week. She's the worst. But this is probably one of the worst things she's ever done, so we're going to go to her for this time and say that, like, next time she does anything, like, that's it. And they're like, actually, thank you for telling us this. She's been causing problems for years now, and now we finally have a reason to tell her, like, it's done. It's over. So you might be thinking that this story is over and that things are going to be good, right? But no. Because when Gabby and Gabby's mom start driving by their house, they see... They, they see, because, like, you know when you pull up to your house, you're pulling up by the, like, the, so there's, like, a sidewalk that leads by Gabby's house, and they're pulling up to their house, and that's when they see someone walking on the sidewalk up to their house, and Gabby's like, go by our house, keep going, keep going. Gabby's mom's like, why? And she's like, that's the Karen. So the Karen was literally walking to Gabby's house. So Gabby's mom and Gabby, you know, they start driving around again. They're like, oh my God, this is insane. And Gabby's mom calls up the non-emergency line again. And they're like, hey, how can we help you? And, and they say, hey, we're the people who called in like a minute ago talking about the dog and the, the old woman, right? And they're like, hey, so we don't know what to do because she is walking up to her house right now. And the non-emergency line's like, okay, well, I guess if we're going to confront this woman, might as uh, doesn't really matter where. So they send a police officer up to the house and, you know, Gabby and Gabby's mom, like, start idling, like, kind of far away from the house, but within sight. And they see the police officer pull, like, pull up to their house, and they see the Karen waiting outside. And that's when Gabby and Gabby's mom drive closely, drive into the driveway, and get out. So there's a police officer, the Karen, Gabby, Gabby's mom, and Gabby's dog, right? It's a, it's, it's a party, bro. It's going to be so hype. I'm kidding. Anyways, though. So the, so the Karen starts pointing. She says, I know that this little girl is a terrible dog owner. And yes, sure, I broke into their backyard and stole their dog, but I did it for good reasons. And the police officer's like, ma'am, so you admit to doing that? She said, yes, but I do in the name of good dog owners. And the police officer's like, ma'am, what? <laughs> like, he wasn't even trying to be like, ex like, explain what you're doing. He's just like, bro, what? But sure enough, right, um, you know, Gabby is like, yeah, she, this, this woman broke in and like I had to go into her backyard to steal my dog back and she was chasing me. The police officer's like, ma'am, turns to Karen, like we've had to deal with you for years. There have been cases and cases of you overstepping, but this time you overstepped way too far, right? You know, there's no charges. These, these nice ones, like these people could very easily press charges. By the way, they clarified they don't want to press charges earlier. And the police officer said, but if you do one more thing, and anything, any complaint comes in, our department is going to deal with this ourselves. Because you've caused too much stress, too much turmoil, turmoil, too much damage to this community by all the acts you've done. Especially this one. This is insane. You broke into this young girl. Why do you think she's a bad dog owner? And the Karen's like, well, the, her dog barked at me. And the police officer's like, What? Is that it? And she's like, well, and he says, no, no, this is insane. You broke into this, this family's house and you stole something of theirs. You robbed them. This is ridiculous. The fact that they're not pressing charges, in my, my opinion, is ridiculous. But if you do one more thing, this department will use all of our resources to make sure that you are no longer a menace to this community. And the Karen is completely deflated at this point. It's like, I understand, sir and walks away. The police officer is like, guys, if you have any other sightings of this woman, right, please send them in. We'll do everything, right? And, you know, uh, Gabby's mom's like, well, we're getting a better backyard. We're also installing security cameras or motion sensor cameras that'll take videos of anything. And if she's in the backyard again, 
we'll also have proof and we'll come in for sure. And the, and the police officer's like, thank you for reporting this. This is insane. She's been a menace for years, but I promise like if anything ever happens again, not even just with you guys, but in general with her, she will no longer be a problem to any of you guys. And let's call today's subscriber Bradley. So Bradley just turned 18 and he decided he wanted to get a minimum wage job to just get a little bit of money while he was in school. And he decided that on the weekends he was going to work in his local Walmart. So anyways, right, every, you know, Friday, Saturday and Sunday night, uh, he would go in from about like five in the afternoon till about nine at night. He would work a shift at Walmart behind the register. And, uh, you know, he was doing it for about a couple months, and a couple months into his time at Walmart, he had one of the craziest encounters with the most entitled Karen of all time. Legitimately, this is even worse than the last Karen story I told in the channel, which was a crazy one. So you gotta strap in. And so anyways, right, this all happens one night, one Friday night. It's around seven at night. And, you know, I don't know, Bradley, it's, it's, it's pretty down at the time, at the moment. No one's really in the Walmart. Bradley's kind of looking at his phone. He's a little bit bored and he's waiting to clock out, but you know, he's getting that bread. You love to see it. And anyways, right, this woman walks in and she has the typical Karen haircut. The problem is, right, I know a lot of people that I love with that haircut, just some really wonderful women, right? But this, Bradley had a feeling, right? She's like, he's like, oh no, th this is, this is bad. Like he already had a feeling that she might be troubled. So he was kind of watching her kind of just like, oh no, man, like this isn't really that good. And the Karen is kind of walking around. She's picking up, putting stuff in her bag, whatever, right? Her, her, she isn't stealing. She's just putting it in like her shopping bag, I should specify, right? So the Karen walks up to the register with a cart or a shopping cart or whatever, shopping, shopping bag full of random items. And she comes up and, I don't know, Bradley doesn't think anything of it. He thinks it's one of his like many routine, just like, you know, scan the items ask if they want to join the rewards program, you know, say, have a nice day with a forced smile. The thing he's been doing a thousand times already. So Bradley gets ready. He starts scanning the items and the Karen's like, oh yes, by the way, uh, is there any chance that like, uh, I could have the nice person discount? And Bradley kind of gives a little chuckle. He's like, oh, that's funny, man. She's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm serious on this one. I was told by someone on Facebook that if I came into Walmart and asked for the nice person uh, discount, uh, you know, since I'm a nice person, I qualify, that I will get 50% off all my stuff. And Bradley's like, oh, well, ma'am, I'm so sorry to tell you, whoever told you that was just making stuff up. And the Karen's like, no, 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 this was my friend, Sh uh, like Sharon, right? She would never actually, she would never make anything up like this. And Bradley's like, well, I guess someone along, maybe someone told her and that person was making it up, or maybe someone who told them who told her, someone along the line made it up, ma'am. Like, eh, maliciously or not, like, we, at the end of the day, we don't have a nice person discount. And Karen was starting to get flustered, and she's like, young man, I know you have the nice person discount. You better give me the nice person discount or we're gonna have problems. Which first of all, that's completely ironic because the whole idea of the nice person discount is that if you're nice, you get a discount, which first of all, that's just not a thing ever anywhere. But also too, you're being a massive jerk about it. Even if it was real, if you're being that much of a jerk, he's not gonna give it to you, even if it was real, cause you're not being nice, right? But anyways, Bradley kind of puts his foot down. It's like, ma'am, that does not exist. And I guarantee you that exists literally nowhere in any other Walmarts. You could go to the Walmart in like a town in Alaska with six people and it would not be a thing. Just, it's just not, uh, Bradley was kind of on the yet. Like he was very like, I don't know. He was tired. He was not really in a great mood because he was working the shift again for the bajillionth time. And now he had to deal with this Karen asking very rudely for the nice person discount. That's kind of ironic in my opinion. But anyways, you guys might be thinking, oh, well, it ends here. And she understandably says, oh, my fault. I guess I was like, had some misinformation. Uh, like, let me just check up my items. But no, the Karen gets mad. And the Karen says something completely outrageous. The Karen is looking at, you know, Bradley. And she's like, no, I know it's real. You're just discriminating against me. And Bradley's like, huh, what? How? <laughs> what can I discriminate against? And the woman's like, you're, you're discriminating against me because you're dis you're discriminating against me, against me because uh, I'm half British. 
And Bradley was like, all right, I cannot laugh. This may be the hardest try not to laugh, you laugh, you lose challenge on YouTube or just in real life at this point. Oh my God. And the Karen's like, yeah, yeah, you're discriminating against me because I am half British. You hate the Brits for some reason and it's disgusting and I will not have it. And Bradley's like, ma'am, no, I do not care if you're literally a freaking walrus that walks in here, even though you're kind of looking like one. All right, he didn't say that part, but maybe she was. I don't know. And he's like, I don't care if you're a freaking like dog walking in on its like hind legs asking for the nice person discount. You're not getting a discount that doesn't exist. Real quick comment, uh, Karen down below, if you want to harden your comment, is that's the secret word of the day. And also, if you want, if you are binge watch my videos or want to binge watch my videos or have binge watched my videos, that is the best way to support the channel. Gives me the beautiful, juicy watch time. Let me know in the comments if you do that. I want to say thank you and maybe give you a heart, maybe reply thanks. I want to let you know I appreciate you. But anyways, right, I appreciate you guys either way. Ah, oh, back to the story, no stalling. And so the Karen is like, yes. I'm being discriminated against because I'm British. And Bradley at this point is trying to keep his composure. He's at the he's at his wits ends, man. I mean, he's been he's tired. He doesn't want to be here. The Karen was asking for the nice person discount and being a jerk while doing it. And now she's now she's saying that she's being discriminated against because she's 50% British. Bruh. Come on, man. Let's are, are you you can't be serious. And the Karen is like I must see the manager immediately. I'm going to get your little butt fired for discrimination. And the, the guy, Bradley's like, ma'am, no. Let me just finish checking up your items. She's like, I don't want these anymore. I'm taking my business somewhere else. You just lost a customer who shops at Walmart all the time. And guess what? There's a Walmart that is a little farther away, but since... They don't discriminate against the British there. I will be going there, and I will guarantee you that they will be giving me the nice person discount. Good day, sir. And she dumps the rest of her items on the floor and storms out. And Bradley is just so just done at this point, because now he had to deal with that nonsense. And now he also has to clean up all the items that the Karen just decided to spam all over the floor. Bradley is not happy, but Bradley is happy about one thing. Because the Karen said that she is never coming back to this Walmart ever again. And that those are the most beautiful words uh, Bradley has ever heard in his life, and he is so excited. However, the Karen was giving him false hope because let's go to part two of the story, day two. Anyways, right, uh, Bradley isn't even has completely forgotten about this Karen, and it is a Saturday, and he's working a shift again. And he's in a much better mood. I mean, he saw his friends earlier in the day. Well, oh my God, my fault for burping and destroying your viewing experience. Please forgive me. <laughs> Anyways, right, you know, he saw his friends earlier in the day. And also he was going to see his friends tomorrow, Sunday morning. So I don't know, Bradley was in a good mood and he has completely forgotten about the Karen. And, you know, it's a little busier now, but it's still not that busy at all. So he's just kind of like looking at his phone and he just happens to be staring just like very blankly, just like kind of spacing off, thinking about other things. And all of a sudden, you know, he's looking at the door and guess who walks in? Yes, the Super Karen has made her very unglorious return. And Bradley is just like, no. And the thing is, right, Bradley does not want to deal with her. So Bradley almost kind of like hides behind his cash register. He's trying to be as like discreet as possible. Because he's like, maybe the Karen wants to mess with me again. Or maybe she's just coming in, like, assuming that this isn't my shift. Either way, I'm hoping she gets whatever she wants, goes to a different register, doesn't even realize that I exist, and just goes about her day. And we all live happily ever after. And I don't have to deal with her anymore. Wow, wouldn't that be nice? So sure enough, right, Bradley is trying to be as discreet as possible, but unfortunately, right, the Karen goes completely out of his view, and he, for about 20 minutes or so, he doesn't see her. So Bradley kind of relaxes a little bit. He assumes that, you know, she went and checked out somewhere else, or she just left at this point, or I don't know. He's, he just assumes that she's not there anymore. And uh, that's when he looks up from his phone, 
and he looks directly, he looks kind of down an aisle because his register is kind of facing down an aisle. And at the very end of the aisle, he is making eye contact with the Karen. And when the Karen makes eye contact back with him, she looks at him in his eyes and gives off this evil smile. And it just sends shivers down Bradley's spine, dude. It is like, he is like, oh my God, this woman is evil. So the Karen, after making direct eye contact with Bradley, takes one hand and shoves it into a shelf full of items. And Bradley, he's just completely thrown off guard. He's like, ma'am, what the, what, huh? What is this woman doing? She's gone insane. But anyways, right, you know, the Karen has put her arm, like, I'd say, like, up to the elbow in the, in, like, in the shelf. And then she starts walking forward. And the thing is, right, she, she has her arm stiff, and it's in the shelf. So everything in the shelf starts flying out into the floor. Bags of stuff start going everywhere. And then she pushes and makes a big swinging motion with her arm. And stuff starts flying everywhere. And she starts laughing. She's freaking cackling, bro. This Karen has gone insane. And she's evil. And she starts, like, kicking stuff. And then she grabs, like, so she goes into the freezer, gets a thing of ice cream, spits in it, looks at uh, looks at Bradley and is like, I don't know, man. So I'm like, imagine evil Karen laugh. Probably sounded a less, less weird than that, but still very weird. And she starts destroy. she's like destroying the entire place. And Bradley knows he needs to clean it. And Bradley is 99.998% sure that he thinks that the, okay. He is 99% sure that the Karen knows that he needs to clean it up too. So she's doing it on purpose. At this point, Bradley, he was in a good mood, man. He's going to see his friends tomorrow. He just saw friends this morning. He's getting that bread. He was in a good mood, you know, right? And his mood takes a complete 180. And he's like, he yells at the Karen. He's like, hey, stop that. And apparently, right, you know, the Karen, who's, like, laughing, a little, like, troll kind of noises. She kind of, like, gets snaps out of that and looks at him for, like, I'd say five seconds with a look of pure shock on her face. And then the Karen looks at him and yells back, I'm gonna call 911 for disrespect. No young man will ever raise their voice to me. And uh, Bradley is just looking at her like, no balls, no shot that she actually calls 911. No way. And so he's looking at the Karen. They're having some kind of like big old standoff, right? And the Karen whips out her phone and starts going beep, 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 beep. I mean, I guess she just goes beep, 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 or beep, 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 because 911 goes, and he says, yes, I'm being attacked at the Walmart at 34 Avenue, subscribe to Connor Pug Street. <laughs> uh, please come. And Bradley can kind of hear what she's saying, and Bradley's like, this woman just called the police. What? Huh? <laughs> I just, I just stood here, man. I just stood here. And the Karen puts down the phone and she's like, you're gonna get fired for this. <laughs> and then she does another a little kind of like troll, like scream, laugh type thing. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know what that means, but it, it's something, it's something. And she's like, starts going around. She starts doing a little dance, like a little jig. She's like, Meh, you're gonna get fired. <laughs> so at this point, like Bradley is just, so bewildered by what is happening. And the Karen is just give, like making little faces at him. And eventually like he sees sirens and flashing lights and the police walk into the building. And you know, the Karen walks to the, it kind of like waddles to the end of the, the aisle. And it's like, so officer, sir, sir, I called, I called. And they're like, ma'am, like uh, what's the issue? And she's like, that boy over there, arrest him immediately. And the officer's like, ma'am, we let's just hear what happened. Let's let's just hear. And she's like, you know, because like, you know, Bradley walks over and it's like, I I don't know. I should be paid extra for this. I should be paid a hundred grand a year for this, man. Not minimum wage. But anyways, right, he walks over, the Karen waddles over, and the police officers are like, All right, ma'am, what happened here? And you know, the Karen is like, 
You see all how all that stuff all over the ground? That was because he pushed me into it and he was brutally attacking me. And because he hates me because I'm British. She had to bring in the British part, bro, which is so ridiculous. I swear to God. But anyways, right, she basically lies that Bradley attacked her and kind of threw her into the, uh, the I don't know, the shelves or whatever. And Bradley is like, what? Like, no, I didn't do any of that. She literally started, like, ripping all that stuff off the shelves. I yelled at her. She said that she was going to call the police on me for disrespecting her, and then she calls you guys. And the Karen looks at the police officers, and it's just like, what story makes more sense? The one where he pushed me into the shelves, and that's why all this stuff is on the ground, or the story where I decided randomly to push all this stuff on the ground, and then when he yells at me, I say I'm going to call 911 because he disrespected me. Which story makes more sense, like, uh, officers? And the officer looks at Bradley and says, hey, can you get your manager or your supervisor? And Bradley's like, yeah, sure. And Bradley's just so mad at this point. He's like, if this woman gets me fired, bro, I swear to God, like, I don't know what I'll do. Bradley is the supervisor, like, we have an issue. And the supervisor's like, all right, whatever. Supervisor comes out. Police officers explain that, you know, they're getting two conflicting stories, and they explain the two conflicting stories. And once the manager hears the Karen story, he, like, sharply turns to Bradley. He's like, Bradley, if this is true, you're being fired immediately. Bradley's like, I swear it's not true. Like, it's simply not true, right? There's like not a single shred that is true. And the manager's like, all right, well, I heard both stories and yours just doesn't seem as believable as hers. Like, they are both ridiculous and it's just crazy this entire thing happened, but yours seems more ridiculous. And Bradley's like, okay, well, this seems to be a he said, she said. Is there any way that we can like, and he kind of like turns to the manager and says, hey, this place is monitored, right? And the manager's like, yeah. He's like, so have the cameras been rolling? Manager's like, yeah. And the Karen's like, no, we don't have time. He's a hooligan and must be arrested immediately. We do not have time to look at the cameras, officer. This is, this is a ploy. This is a plot. How do you guys, you are so foolish. You gentlemen are foolish, I hate to say. This is a plot of his to escape. Yes, I can see it so clearly. He wants you guys to go over to the camera room while he dashes out of here unscathed. And the officers are like, ma'am, trust me, like, we'll make sure he doesn't escape. Uh, but we should review the camera footage as, you know, if you do actually want to press charges, it will be a great resource. And the Karen's like, no, he's going to escape, trust me. And the officer's like, nah, we're going to look at the tapes. Trust me, he's not going anywhere. And the Karen is like, you know what? Um, well, I actually have a meeting to go to. And the officer's like, ma'am, trust me, this will take like a couple minutes. And she's like, no, no, I'm really late. And the officers are like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to tell whoever you're having a meeting with that you're just going to be a couple minutes late. And the Karen's like, uh, and they're like, all right. And they kind of like move her along and they all move into the room where the cameras are. So the manager goes up to the security guard or the security guard isn't there. So the manager has to go find the security guard. The security guard opens up the room where all the cameras are. And it's like, all right, like, what do you want to like look at? And the security guard or the manager's like, uh, well, when did you guys get the report and the police check the records? We got the call 20 minutes ago. So sure enough, right. They go into the cameras and they check the film like 22 minutes ago. And they start playing. And at this point, right, Bradley, Bradley's in a good mood again because he's really mad that he's been dragged into all of this absurd nonsense by the craziest Karen of all time. Fair enough, right? But now, you know, he's about to see this Karen get absolutely wrecked. Get absolutely wrecked, get completely owned. Why would he not be in a good mood now? Like he's about to see his biggest enemy of all time lose. It, it, it lose in a major fashion. And, you know, he's just sitting there. He's basically taking a, lip, a victory lap. And the Karen, he looks over. She's kind of sweating. She's like, I really have something to go to, guys. Like, I don't know if I can be here. And they're like, ma'am, we're almost there. Trust us. We'll be as quick as possible. So anyways, right, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, can we get your names? And, you know, the Karen gives her full name and Bradley gives his full name. And uh, yeah, anyways, they keep looking at the footage and they're, they're just kind of like starting to fill out a report, whatever. And they get to the moment and sure enough, 
that Karen is very clearly on camera destroying all the stuff on the shelves. And then they see Bradley get kind of like, ang- like kind of like motion as he's yelling. And the Karen yells back, calls 911, and then she does a little waddle dance in like a victory celebration. It is the most embarrassing thing ever to be caught on camera. And the officers are like, wow, well, this was not the turn of events that we expected. And the manager looks at Bradley and is like, sorry for doubting you. And he's like, you know, your job's safe, just, just to let you know. And the officers are like, all right, well, it's very clear what happened here. Uh, well, the manager can, manager can choose to press charges for, you know, the damage that you did here. And we are definitely going to do something about yeah, misuse of police resources and, you know, filing a false 911 call. And Karen's like, he altered it. He altered the tapes. Yes, that is what happened. He was very quickly, while we were so distracted, while you foolish cops were distracted, I don't know, eating donuts or something, he went into the room and he changed the cameras with an altered app version. And they're like, ma'am, how on earth would that happen? She's like, you don't understand technology. They have wizard apps that can turn anything into anything. They're like, ma'am. I'm sorry, like, no, like, you're, we're, we're ex- expect to be in court in a couple days, because, or, or, or expect to receive a fine. I don't know exactly how that works, but she, uh, eventually, right, what happened was the Karen was kind of, like, fine for, or got some sort of small punishment for calling a, like, a false 911 call, and then also the store did press charges, and they got about, like, $1,000 worth of damages, and she was banned from ever entering this, uh, the, that specific Walmart's property ever again. And Bradley had a story to tell at every kind of like new date he had, or anytime someone's like, you have any good stories, Bradley would be able to say, yes, yes, I do actually. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it.